Oh man, uh, when I went out there, like first off, let me just say like, the roar that I got from that crowd, I had no clue it was gonna be that bad. I knew it was gonna be a roar, but I could literally feel like the vibrations through my body as they were roaring. And I'm just like, in my head, I'm like, all of this, this is for me, little old me. Like, I, I love you Rochester, but dang, I didn't know y'all was gonna come out like this. So it's just, uh, I'll be dreaming about this night for the next couple of weeks. Hugging your mom, getting to see her in the crowd. You had the whole section, I felt like, right in the front. Oh, what was that like? Oh, uh, that was uh, that was quite the moment. You know, when I went over to hug my mom, she just hugged me. She said, "I love you. You made me proud once again." And uh, I just I almost started crying. I'm just I just told her I love you. This is only the only the beginning. You know, I just I just moved her. She just quit her job, and I had her move down to Florida with me. And uh, you know, so she's just I'm on cloud nine. She's on cloud nine. It's just it's great. God is good. Heading into the third round, how did you feel those final seconds when you you know when it, when you knew it was going to a decision? How did you feel? Uh, I knew I, well. I knew I won because I knew I knew I was winning and everything. And going into that, like the last bit, and I, I hurt my elbow a lot. And I'm just like, when I when, it, when I first hurt my elbow and it like it was halfway through the third, I, I kind of thought I had broken. I'm like, oh my god. I'm like, just get through the round. I don't care if my arm falls off. Just get through this round. You won. You know, secure the win. And uh, those last ten seconds, it looked like I was running away, but I was just so happy. I was just like, yo, just get away from me, guy. Get away. I won. Just get away from me. I just wanted, to, I just wanted to finish it out. And uh, yeah, man, it was great. Like I can't even. This is like one of the top three moments of my life. Yeah, state championship win in wrestling in 2007. <coughs> win here, UFC, Rochester. Where do you rank the two? Up until tonight, that 07 state win was the best moment of my life, and uh, tonight it definitely topped it, man. It definitely topped it. So is it safe to say this is the funnest part you've been a fight of, considering you finally got to have your homecoming, especially in the UFC? Oh, yeah, definitely, man, definitely. This is uh, this is probably the highest high I've been, and, uh, you know, I just I wish I could just pause this moment kind of forever and just, like, just live in this moment. Like, I'm on such a high, like, nothing could bring it down, and... Like I said, I, I just I can't even I can't even fathom like what just happened. I'm gonna go back in the locker room probably, put my hands in my head and just pray and thank God again for this victory. What are your thoughts about this uh, media turnout? Have you seen this many cameras before? Oh man, no, and I love it. I love the camera. You know, it's it's just crazy. Like it, it's still, you know, it took me five years to get to the UFC. I had almost 25 fights before I got to the UFC. That's some guy's career. But, you know, I never, not once was I discouraged, you know what I mean? Like, last year was one of the roughest years inside and outside of the octagon of my life, you know, when my manager dying, the car accident I got in, I lost two fights in a row, you know. Um, but, you know, I stayed faithful and, you know, I, I got rewarded for it. So, it's just great. Talk a little bit about Charles Jordan. I mean, he's not a guy who a lot of UFC fans necessarily know, but he was a double champ uh, outside the promotion. He really did kind of push tonight. Yeah, uh, man, hats off to Charles. You know, I didn't take him lightly at all, but I will say he bought a lot more than I thought he would bring. You know, I was hitting him with some hard shots, and, uh, you know, he never backed down. He was always moving forward. He had a gas tank on him. I knew his wrestling was his weak point, but uh, it was stronger than I thought it was. You know, I took him down, and he didn't concede to the takedowns. He was throwing up submissions, getting out, giving me his back and getting out. Um, you know, hats off to him. And he's light for 155. You know, he's going to be going back down to 45, I heard. And I really think he's going to have success there. You know, hats off to Charles. Thanks for taking this fight. Without him, I wouldn't be able to fight in Rochester. So, you know, hats off to Charles again. What's the best part about being home? Best part about being home is what's about to happen tonight. I'm gonna go out. We're gonna be celebrating, popping bottles, kissing my cousins, my family members, people that's not my cousin that's still saying they're my cousins. Everybody's my family tonight. I just, I just love being able to celebrate and bring it home with the people that I grew up with. You know, I got my high school coach. Everybody, like you know, kids from elementary school reaching out to me. It's just one of the EMTs is like, "Yo, I graduated Rush Henrietta in '11. We're proud of you." And it's like. Feeling that, like, you know, I, I, I was able to give him joy. This is a win for you, but it's also a win for the sport. Um, what do you hope you showed Rochester what MMA is all about? Um, I definitely, I hope I showed them that, you know, like, kids could dream, you know. Like, in Rochester, we only have a couple professional athletes. Um, one, I'm one of the only, like, people actually from from Rochester to make it to the UFC. And, uh, you know, so I hope I hope more kids do it. You know, I hope more kids jump into the sport. You know, it's, it's an ever-growing sport. And like you said, it's not just a win for me. It's a win for the sport. It's a win for the city. You know, we're able to bring so much revenue here. I heard we're almost selling out the Blue Cross. So, you know, I just hope that we, I could bring them back there and, uh, you know, I, I, I get the headline of the event or at least main card it. So much work. Uh, 
Uh, it was crazy, man. It was crazy. I like when I first stepped into the ring and they were screaming. I like my heart started beating fast. Like I was like I was actually already in a fight. I had to tell myself like, yo, control yourself. Like you haven't even started fighting yet, and you're you're like you're beating and you're getting all uppity. So I'm, I had to you know just home it in. But it also helped motivate me. You know, I'm like this crowd is loud. If you lose, it's gonna get quiet real quick. You know, this after party. Won't be too fun, so you know it, it just really made it really reiterated like that. I had to win. I had to uh, you know do the job first. Before the start of the third round, we saw you kind of look to your mom. Um, you know, what do you think she was trying to tell you? Uh, she's trying to tell me to focus up, bring it home. You know, she uh, she's always she's always like you know uh, finish what you started. That's one of her favorite phrases. So you know when I looked at her, it was just like. I got that much more confidence, you know. Uh, nobody wants to lose in front of their mom. You know, some people don't even like their mom to be there, but like, she's my best friend. Like, she literally is my best friend. She's like my biggest fan. So, you know, seeing, being able to lock eyes with her in that third, it just, it, it gave me that much more energy. Could you hear her? I, she was right behind us. Oh, I heard her. I, I heard her. I heard her 100%. I heard. I, I even heard her like throughout the fight as we were going. You know what I mean? I'm just like, I got you, mama. I got you. Don't worry. I'm gonna bring it home. We talked to you on Wednesday. You said the post-game plan was to get a garbage plate. Yeah. How are you feeling? Still? Oh, for sure, 100%. I'm going to Nick Tahoe tomorrow. I cannot <laughs> wait. I got a couple of my teammates, Vicente Luque, Luque and Gilbert, you know, who's cornering him. I actually showed them a picture of the garbage plate last week when we were in Florida. And they're like, ew, what is that? I'm like, <laughs> Watch your mouth. Don't say <laughs> ill. I don't want to hear it until you try it. So I'm going to bring them to Tahoe tomorrow, and uh, we'll see how they like it. How's the elbow? Uh, that was good, man. I think I just hyperextended it. Um, it's hurting more and more the more my adrenaline is going down. So I'm pretty sure tonight it's going to be sore a lot. I'll go get an MRI on it. Um, but, you know, that my arm could fall off. I'm, I'm going hard tonight. What's <laughs> next for you? How many Zenzu beans tonight did you use? Dragon Ball Z reference. Oh, man, a whole lot of them. A whole lot of them, man. I, 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 had, the ener I had energy for days. We could have went three, four more rounds, man. Uh, what's next? I want to get right back to the drawing board. You know, I wasn't, not to take anything away from Charles, but I wasn't completely happy with my performance. I wanted to finish. I felt like I could have done more. And uh, I underestimated with fighting at home. You know, my coach told me, like, you know, it's different. I'm like, no, no, I'm at home. It's good. But, you know, it was a little bit draining going out there and, like, hearing the crowd. And I'm like, I got so hyped up on it. Normally I'm just calm and I, you know, I attack more. But a lot of times when I was out there, I'm like, don't make a mistake. You know, don't make a mistake. And especially seeing my teammate kind of get knocked out right before me. It kind of made me real hesitant to shoot in. So, you know, I, 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 I had takedowns, but I could have had a lot more and I could have been a lot more aggressive. But, you know, it's, it's just something back to the drawing board. You know, I had a good fight, nothing to take away from my win. But you know, it was back to the drawing board and I'm trying to get another fight in in the next three months. You've talked a couple of times about your uh, teammates on this card, obviously Hard Knocks 365. Talk about uh, that gym and what it's uh, done for your game. Oh man, it's, it's it's brought my game to many many different levels. You know, uh, we got we got some of the best guys at our gym. You know, we got a world champion, Kamara Usman. We got uh, Gilbert Durino, who's on a tear. We have you know uh, Rashad and um, Rumble Johnson, who just retired. They still come in and help us. Rashad's here. He was helping us warm up earlier this week. You know what I mean? Um, we got Luke Vicente. We got Nick Lentz. We got uh, 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 Robbie Lawler. The list goes on. Like we got about. 15 solid guys, so you know, and we all push each other. It's uh, like sparring days in that room, you can sell tickets to. So uh, being down there, you know, has really helped a lot. And uh, you know, also, uh, I just started working with a new Muay Thai coach, uh, Gregory Choplin, and uh, he's really brought my game to different levels. So, you know, between hard knocks and you know, me working out with Gregory, um, it, the sky's the limit for me, I feel like. Saying you want to get back in there in the next few months, is there a certain card that piques your interest? Um. No, not really. Honestly, any card and any opponent that gets me closer to the top, you know. I do know they're going to Australia, I think, in, like, October or something. I've always wanted to see a kangaroo. I, just, I don't know. I have a thing for kangaroos. I always wanted to see one. So, you know, Sean Shelby, thanks for putting me on this card. If you want to put me on an Australia card, bro, I'd be more than happy to go out there and perform. Thank you. Go celebrate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you.